Welcome to today's episode of the Osasu Show. We are at Adagbo Community uh, in Agatu local government area of Benue State. We've spoken to the chairman of the community, which we'll be seeing later on in this episode. We've spoken to victims who lost their loved ones, their relatives, in the massacre that occurred during the last week of February. The governor of Benue State, uh, His Excellency Sam Autumn, visited uh, the Agatu local government yesterday and he was able to visit some villages and communities that were destroyed due to the Fulani Headsmen massacre. So today we'll be talking to more people and more indigents of these communities and local government area, asking them exactly word for word what occurred during the Fulani Headsmen visit to Agatu. This is not the first time this has occurred. Back in 2012, we had over 150 people killed due to uh, this Fulani Headsmen crisis. So again, we would like to figure out what is the permanent solution to this continuous crisis um, conflict that has been occurring. Stay tuned for this exclusive interview. My name is Osasu Igbenedion and I am your host. Today we are in Ogowa Secondary School in Makodi. This was donated by His Royal Highness High Chief Godwin Ona to the internally displaced people who were victims of the Agatu massacre. Today I'll be speaking to two women who uh, lost their relatives due to this uh, Fulani Headsmen massacre. Can you walk us through the event of what occurred on the fateful night that your husband was killed? We were just sitting peacefully in our village. When the Fulani headsmen came and started killing us. What do you think is the general cause of the Fulani headsmen clash? Why do you think that they went to your village and killed people? I don't know what really happened. They just came and started attacking our village. Did you see, was your husband killed in front of you? Yes, they killed my husband in my presence. What kind of weapons were they holding? Cutlasses, guns? They carried very sophisticated weapons. Sophisticated weapons? Wow. Okay, and are Fulani headsmen part of your village? Are they, do they frequent your community often, your village often? They normally come. What do you think is the solution to end this Fulani headsmen clash that we're having today? Government, please come to our aid. Thank you so much, ma'am. And now, can you tell me, what is your name and what village in Agatu are you from? I'm from Ukulu in Agatu. Okay, can you walk us through the event of what happened on that fateful night that your husband was killed? We were just sitting in the evening when the Fulani headsmen just came. When they came, we started running into the bush. They just surprised us. We ran into the bush and they killed my husband. Is this the first time Fulani headsmen have attacked people in your village? It's not the first time. The first time they came, we ran to the farm. How many days was your village attacked for? They came about four to five times. Why didn't anybody call security services for backup to help you in the community when they came, when they were coming frequently? We called them, but there was no response. What of your local government chairman? Were you able to get in contact with him, your leaders, your village heads? We've told them they are aware. What do you think the, the issue, the core issue of this Fulani headsmen clash is? And how can the government solve it once and for all? Government should mount permanent checkpoints in our village. Thank you so much for this exclusive interview and we'll be right back on the Osasu Show. Welcome back to the Osasu Show. We're still in Nogoa Secondary School in Makodi, Benue State. Donated by His Royal Highness Chief Godwin Ona. We're here with his son who's the coordinator of this camp that is inhabiting internally displaced people from Agatu local government area. Thank you so much for joining us in today's program. Thank you. So, Mr. Emmanuel, can you tell us what are the basic essentials that we can provide or the government can provide for the internally displaced people in this camp? Well, let me first and foremost thank uh, the state government through the state uh, emergency management agency. Since the establishment of this camp, they have been making provisions of food items and uh, mattresses, buckets, and uh, water. I hear there are some of the children who are sick. I interviewed a lady earlier and her baby was sick, but she doesn't have money to take her to the hospital. And since she lost the sole breadwinner in her family, her husband, um, in the Agatu massacre, 
she seems helpless and she claims she's not getting any help from the government to take her child to uh, the hospital. So what can the government do in terms of health care? Well, the last week, Her Excellency, one of the Vice President was here and uh, she, do, she spoke to some of the ladies here that uh, she's going to make uh, everything possible and very soon they are going to bring doctors here to check some of those, uh, the ones that are not feeling fine. Even yesterday, the, 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 the face of Idoma, an NGO paid a visit to this place, she also made uh, that same promise that she is going to make uh, everything possible to bring these doctors to this camp so that they can check with some of the displaced people here that are not feeling fine. How long do you think it would take for to get the people of this camp to settle back to their villages spread around the Gatu? I don't really know. I don't know. Have you heard any word from the governor? The governor for the past month and a half hasn't visited the scene of Agatha till today, April 5th, and the massacre occurred the last week of February. So on the 25th, sorry, on the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 26th, and 27th, if I'm correct. So why do you think the governor hasn't responded, and why do you think it took him this long to visit the scene of the Agatha massacre? That I don't think I have any much to say because it's a security uh, issue. The last meeting they had, the governor of Bonnie State and governor of uh, Northern State was uh, in uh, February. The governor of Bonnie State went to Northern State and the Northern State governor made a promise that they are going to visit Agatu. So I think His Excellency, the governor of Bonnie State, was waiting for the, his Northern State counterpart to come so that they can go. Unfortunately, this attack does came like that. The massacre happened for one week straight, so mm. it took the governor one month and a half to respond. Uh, that I don't think, I don't have anything to say for that, I don't know. That is a security issue. Okay, uh, so what can the government do to help the people of this internally displaced camp? People who are watching nationwide, how can they assist you in caring for the internally displaced people here? Well, if they can help us provide basic facilities like Medicare, type, pipe bomb water and securities. Like I see some of them don't have mattresses here. So they can help with such materials will be very, very grateful to them. What do you think is the permanent solution to stop this Polanyi headsman killing that has been going on for quite an amount of time? This is the first time it has happened on such a large scale. That is why people nationwide and international communities as well are hearing about it. But the, but the um, Polanyi headsman clash where Polanyi headsmen come into the villages and kill farmers, um, um, landowners, has been going on for quite some time. So what do you think is the permanent solution that would end this once and for all? Uh, well, if the state government can help us, with security agencies mounted at the riverline areas, at strategic checkpoints, I think it will stop the headsmen from attacking us, the Agatha people. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel, for joining us on today's program. live from Agatu local government. We're right now at the local government headquarters with the chairman, Honorable Joseph Mbede. Thank you so much for joining us on today's program. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. So can you walk us through what happened in the recent month and a half when the Fulani headsmen uh, infiltrated some villages in Agatu? Yes, it's very unfortunate here yeah, to the people of Agatu. The Fulani Hesmai came here in their numbers with their kettles. In fact, what we saw here, we never experienced in the whole lifetime. And it's is quite unfortunate. The dis disaster was obvious. They have uh, sacked about um, 475 villages. And these people are all homeless for now, as I talk with you. What do you think is the reason this occurred? Uh, the reason, nobody knows the reason. They just say they want to come and grace. And once they come, they come with their arms. They come with, in fact, Agatu is just a small local government. But the number of cattle that come to enter this Agatu, sometimes more than three million cattle. 
So eventually, we are leaving the people of Gatu with no option of maybe you are just sacking the Gatu people completely. In most times, they go to their farms and they now brought out all the farm crops, which these people have suffered for years. They will pour them on the ground for the, their cattle to, to feed on. Even the pantry, ordinary pantry in the, in the, in the, in the community, oh, they will just march them down. The mango trees, they will cut them down for their cattle to feed on. Honestly, I've never seen such destruction. Isn't there any protective mechanisms that we can deploy? Local government chairman, yourself, and the government, hand in hand with the government, the state government, to ensure that the crops of the local Agatu farmers are protected from these Fulani herdsmen who come to rear their cattle here? Uh, yes. Uh, when they started the whole thing, honestly, this uh, whole thing started since 2012. We didn't just start it now, but to God be the glory. I think for now they have deployed uh, some uh, personnel, some security agency. And these are the people that are giving us a kind of, a, a, a kind of freedom for now. Otherwise, I don't think any Agatu will be standing for now. If they've deployed security agencies, I'm aware that the Agatu killings, the massacre occurred throughout the entire last week of February. Can you tell us what date specifically that villages were burnt down and when the Fulani herdsmen invaded Agatu? I'm sorry, can you come again? What setting, what villages were burnt down? What villages okay. came under uh, the fire of the Fulani herdsmen and what days in February did this occur? Yes, um, let me say, cross across from Olegeje, we have um, um, Adana, we have um, Abube, we have Adabu, we have um, Aku, Okokolo, Odubeho, Olego Bidu. We have um, Aila. In fact, almost three council words were sacked completely, as I talked to you. And they occurred on different days? Different days. They came in on 22nd. 22nd February. Yes, and yes. they were there till they the end of February. They, they were there, they were there. So what happened? They will come, they will fall out. They don't come to remain permanent. Okay. They will come and they will go like maybe regroup themselves, mm -hmm. then come back again for the attack. I think that's what happened. Wow. So when we saw um, a consistency of them coming in and going out, why weren't the security agencies alerted? that these Fulani headsmen have returned and they're potentially um, going to do harm to the community? Yes, as in the security. You know, the soldier, when we, I, we reported the whole thing to the governor of our state, which is the chief security, and we believe that he doesn't have the power to deploy the military. Because at the time, we talked this thing is just ordinary. We are using the police force. But honestly, at its level, you know that it's beyond the police force. And but were the police force on ground when this occurred? Yes, I would say the police, go, uh, the police force are on ground, but they outnumber the police force that we are on ground. How many fallen headsmen are we talking about? In fact, you need to see them, their numbers. I've never seen that kind of cattle in my whole life. In just a certain community, the cattle you see, in fact, there's no space, you will not see any land, all are cattle. I've never seen that kind of thing in my whole life, honestly. And how many people, how many of these Katureras came with them? I, I said that they are eventually everywhere. In all of these communities I call, they, are, they, are, they like have their station, station, station. Everywhere. Everywhere. You hardly know where to start from at a point. You talk of Agatu West, they are there. You talk of Agatu East, they are there. But what isn't the simple solution to deploy more police? Yes, I think by God's grace with a lot has happened. That is just it. They came in and did a lot, caused a lot of power and damages. But we do know, since the, the military interceded for now, I think we are having a little bit peace. Okay, the military has interceded, yes, interceded right now. Yes, now. And okay, so what's peace. the kind of relief materials and relief um, uh, help are you looking for from the government, from the federal government and from the state government to, first of all, put a stop to these um, herdsmen killings once and for all, and secondly, to help the people of Aga to get back on their feet and start rebuilding their community. Yeah, yes, uh, we really need uh, even the personnel are not 
much as we expected. We still want the federal government to still come to our aid to send more or diploma personnel. Because up till now, we are still facing some threatening of the flying headsmen. Not as if they have left completely, but I do know that by the time the, by the, time the federal government and the state government will come together to deploy more uh, security agency, that will help the Aga to resettle back to their home. Uh, for some of those homes, who has been completely sacked. You know, we are just mainly farmers. We don't have anything doing. The people are just farmers. So all we need is just a building material to let them start. Some people don't even have food to eat. They don't have place to lay their head. If you go around and see things for yourself, endlessly, you will convince that really, this is beyond flying Hesmer. So who do you suspect they are if they're not I thought maybe there might be Boko Haram or something. I don't know. I've never seen that kind of destruction. I've wow. never seen endlessly. The whole house, schools, mosques, uh, churches, everything be burned down. To the extent, the small, small food that we are there for the people to feed on you brought, in fact, have never witnessed such things. Their property all be burnt. If you have motorcycle, they burnt, car, everything. For one to go and start, I don't know what is going to start. Has anyone had a conversation with them to ask them, what is it exactly that you want? Do you want the land? Do you want the crops? What do you want from the people of Agato? In fact, these are the things that everybody has been pushing. We on our own have been pushing to know why these things are happening. And Nestle have not gotten any answer from anywhere. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Thank Honorable. You. You're welcome. I'm here with Mr. Joseph. Mr. Joseph, can you tell me, can you walk us through the event of what occurred uh, when the Fulani headsmen came with their cattle into your community? In fact, the case started over five years back. And we don't know actually what, what was the causes of the problem between Agatu and Fulani. So we have been asking ourselves and we didn't know what was actually happened. They used to come to our house every, even at night and kill about at least every day they must kill up to five or five hundred people. And they burned around the riverside at least three to four years back. And this year, actually this thing has happened again. They kid, even at the go here, they killed about 115 good boys and girls. I will need a help from the federal government, even the state government doesn't care much about, about, about us. So we have been pleading to the state government, but nothing has happened. Still, we are, we are still pleading to the federal government if this, to, this case could, could have finished up with us. So we thank the federal government and we still are applying to the federal government so that this case should be finished. Why do you think the full and e heads men are coming to your communities? What do they want? They, I don't actually know because I have never sat with them and speak what was actually happening. They used to come at night and kill us. Or sometimes in the afternoon. For the past five years, this For has been five, occurring. It has been happening over five, up to five years now. So they come to your land. So I heard the conflict is they come to your land with their cattle, they destroy your crops, destroy all your economical trees. Then the war, the fight starts between the indigents of this community and the Fulani headsmen. Is that what is stemming the problem? That was actually problems. It, there is at least a more body from this village. Even in cassava, nobody has it in the farm, and, uh, we, and we are all farmers here. Most, nobody is a trader, and nobody is, most, most of our young, young boys are just workers. But we don't actually know what was actually happened to, between the Flannies and Nagatu. So we are still pleading. Because we are now, we, even, t even to feed from now to September, even to the next season, Monday, no, none of us could be able to feed ourselves. So we are pleading to the federal government, state government to come and help, to come and assist us. So how do you, what kind of assistance are you looking for from the federal government? If they could be able to help us at least build our house and spice us, at least anything, food and any other things. None of us, we don't even have a mattress to sleep and we don't have house to sleep. So if they could be able to apply us zinc or other things to at least to, to enforce us to, to have a really partly enjoyment. Okay, thank you so much. And lastly, I heard before the Fulani headsmen came into the community, they told, they alerted the people of this community um, and local government in general. They said that they were coming and people should watch out for them. So when you heard that, when you heard that the, the coming of the Fulani herdsmen, were you scared and did some people leave the community because of that? All of us leave the house because we could not, we don't know, they, they come with at least about what, even more than, five or four hundred of them, and they are with gums. 
And none of us has, has, has gum, so we have All to of them out. came with gums. Gums. Yeah. And, they have, and they are cows. So we could not be able to stand with them. And they would just shoot you on sight, or is only if you have a farm that they would kill you? No, if, if none of us now, if, if within the area here, if we have a farm at least a kilometer far, you could not be able to go. And we have nothing to do rather than, uh, than farming. So how come they left the farms and came to your houses to burn down the houses as well? Yes. They used to come at even at any time to even at at farm and at home. So is the issue just about the farm? Do they want to possess the farm, or they just want to drive the people of Agato away? They, from they here? drive us and at least to, and the cow will take everything and eat everything. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Mrs. Lizzie. Can you actually walk us through your own perspective of the issue that occurred here at Agato and what your solution is to the government? How you can advise the government to solve it? Well. We know how far the planning fight with us because we cannot withstand it. As you can see, even me, I lost my two, one son and one daughter. So they killed them just because we are running just to save. So and then I plead for the government to assist us because we have no food to eat. There is no house shelter to live. There is, we don't even have clothes. There is no even good water to drink. So I'm praying with the government to assist us if they can assist us. And you see there is no road. And we need security that will guide us because of... The, the war. Uh, some military personnel were recently deployed to Agato. Do you feel safe now that some military personnel have been deployed here? You know, there are many ways that the Fulani can bust out because maybe the security may be at this place and this place, but there's road for here for the Fulani to pass. But I don't think that we are safe because we need some that will be in our, in our village. Living in your communities yes. with you? Yes. How many people do you think lost their lives? due to this recent massacre? Almost 500 people lost their lives, both pregnant women, literally two children, young men and young boys. Did you see with your eyes dead bodies on the road? Even I lost my two, my two sons. Can you recount to me your experience? What exactly happened? What days did, were your community attacked? Just one beautiful afternoon. We just sit down. Some, we went to farm. So from the farm, we started hearing the gun. They started shooting gun. What happened? They said it's full and So now we're running. We just, when I went on the saw they attacked us, but God saved me and my two daughters. So many, we lost many of our young boys and young girls. But on our coming back, there are so many, many dead bodies in the compound. So, but the, our community people has to let us out so that they will bury them before we come because we are women. So we are very, 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 very angry for that one. So we need the government to assist us. What do you think the Fulani headsmen want? I don't really know what they want. I don't, because you know I'm a, I'm a woman, so I don't really know what they want. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Mrs. Lizzie. That's it for today's episode of the Osasu Show. We'll be heading back to Abuja. But before we leave, we'd like to plead with the federal government and the state government to really look into the issue of the Agato massacre. Over 350 people were killed between February 22nd and February 29th. This issue has been ongoing for over five years in Agatu Benue State. So we really need to bring the perpetrators to books to end this issue once and for all. From our investigation, the genesis of this issue started when the Fulani headsmen brought in their cattle to trample on the crops that were grown for over three months and sometimes eight months on um, the land of the Agatu people. Therefore, the people here are hungry, they're starving. People here don't have the place to lay their head at night. They don't have mattresses. They don't have clean drinking water. So they really need the assistance of all the uh, organizations out there, the NGOs and the federal government to provide for them at this at their time of crisis so i'll see you same time same place next week and until then you can watch extended clips of this episode on our website www.theosasoshow.com take very good care of yourself